it seems like in the short term, you have more sort of um, credence on things taking a while, being more jagged. But in the maybe in the long term, you think like the people who say talk about AGI and ASI are correct. Like Sam, Sam will be right, but eventually. Um, and I, I have a broader question about what makes sense for a hyperscaler to do, given that you have to invest massively in this thing which depreciates over five years. So, so you, if you have 20, 40 timelines to the kind of thing that somebody like Sam anticipates in three years, um, you know, what, what is a reasonable thing for you to do in that world? There needs to be an allocation uh, to, I'll call it research compute. Mm. That needs to be done like you did R&D, yeah. right? So that's the best way to even account for it, quite frankly. You should think of it as just R&D expense, and you should say, hey, what's the research computer, and how do you want to scale it? Yeah. Um, and let's even say it's an order of magnitude scale uh, in some period. Pick your thing. Yeah. Is it two years? Is it 16 months? What have you, right? So that's sort of one piece, which is kind of, that's kind of table stakes. That's R&D expenses. And the rest, is all demand driven, right? I mean, ultimately, you can, you'll have to build ahead of demand, but you better have a demand uh, a plan uh, that doesn't go completely off kilter. Do, do, you, do you buy, so uh, these labs are now projecting revenues of 100 billion in 27, 28, uh, and they're projecting, you know, revenue keeps growing at this rate of like 3x, 2x See, a year. Lot, like, in the marketplace, right, there's all kinds of incentives right now, and, and rightfully so, right? I mean, what, what do you expect an independent lab that is sort of trying to raise money to do, right? They have to put some numbers out there such that they can actually go raise money so that they can pay their bills for compute yeah. and what have you. And it's and it's good thing. I mean, someone's going to take some risk and put it in there, and they've shown traction. It's not yeah. like it's all risk without seeing the fact that they've yeah. been performing, whether it's open AI, whether it's anthropic. So I feel great about what they've done. Uh, and we have massive book of business with these yeah. chaps. So therefore, uh, that's all good. But overall, ultimately, there's two simple things. One is you got to allocate for R&D. You brought up even talent. You got to, like, the talent for AI yeah. is at a premium. You got to spend there. You got to spend on compute. So in some sense, researcher to GPU ratios have to be high. Uh, that is sort of what it takes to be a leading R&D company in this world. Uh, and that's something that needs to scale. Um, and you have to have a balance sheet that allows you to scale that long before it's conventional wisdom and so on. So that's kind of one thing. But the other is all about sort of knowing how to forecast. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.